Are you hungry? I know I am. Let's get cracking. What's up guys? My name is Jacob. This is Conscious Cooking and today we're making red sauce. And I know what you're thinking. I can't eat red sauce. It has too much acid. Gives me heartburn. I don't like that. It's a bad time. I know how you feel. I have the same problem. We're still making red sauce. And I know what you're thinking. Jacob, you're not listening. I can't have red sauce. The tomatoes give me heartburn. Well, we're not using tomatoes. So hot. So now I know what you're still thinking. Then it's not red sauce. Relax. I have a plan. I had a vision. And by that I mean I was bored at work one day and I was thinking about what to do for conscious cooking. And one of my friends asked me if I wanted pizza. And I said, I would, but I can't have pizza. They said, why? And I explained to them how I shouldn't have dairy. I can only have it in, you know, like small amounts. And I can't have the tomato sauce because the acid really messes with me. It gives me really bad heartburn. And they were like, but you only got diagnosed like a year or two years ago. Actually, it was a, it's a little over a year ago at this point. And I said, yeah. So we kept talking and they're like, well, what did you used to like on your pizza? And my favorite pizza topping of all time is roasted red peppers. I love roasted red peppers. I love that silky, smooth, smoky earthiness that the roasted red peppers have about it. And it gave me an epiphany. And that epiphany was, okay, why not turn the whole thing on its head? Instead of doing pizza, let's do pasta. Instead of using tomatoes as the base for the sauce, let's use roasted red peppers as the base for the sauce. So I spent a few days brainstorming, thinking about the best way to do this. And I've come up with a pretty good idea. The problem is the exact kind of roasted red peppers that I was looking for, I couldn't find. So I had to make some adjustments, and that's what cooking is about. It's about making adjustments so that your final product is what you want it to be. Originally, I wanted for the smoked, seeded red peppers. They used to have them at one of the old restaurants that I worked at, and they were awesome because they had just the right amount of smokiness, just the right amount of sweetness, just the right amount of, you know, kind of kick to them. I couldn't find those anywhere. <laughs> I just couldn't. So I had to adapt. Those things came in one pound jars. Well, after you drained them, it was like 13 ounces. And that's going to be the thing that you have to keep in mind whenever you are doing anything with roasted red peppers. You have to account for the weight after you drain them because the weight after you drain them and the weight before you drain them are very different. For example, for this episode, I used 12 ounce jars. After I drained them, they were about 10 ounces, roughly. You, you gotta remember, it's, everything's about a give or take. It was about 10 ounces afterwards. I used four jars because I wanted three pounds of product that afterwards, would become probably around two and a half pounds of product. And that's right around where I was. Well, technically that's exactly where I was, but after you cook it down, it's not quite that high. But basically I wanted more sauce than pasta because I was planning on doing fettuccine al fuego. And obviously you know that's the title of the episode. I thought this was the greatest naming of all time. I'm calling it that because it's fire red, it's got a little bit of spice slash kick to it, and it sounds like fettuccine alfredo. I know. 
I know what you're thinking. Still, he is so smart. How did he come up with something like that? There's a restaurant around here called Del Fuego. And the first time I heard about it, I thought they said it was Del Fredo. So I can't really take credit for it. But we're going to be making fettuccine al fuego, which is just going to be a... Not spicy. I don't like using the term spicy. A medium heat red pepper based sauce. So we're avoiding the acid of the tomatoes. And I can't go too spicy because that would also cause acid reflux in myself and people that have similar conditions. But the roasted red peppers that I got were eh. They were really bland if I'm being perfectly honest with you, which is exactly why I'm not telling you what brand I used. The brand was bland. So after I had pureed them with my immersion blender, I decided to doctor it up a little bit. So I added a little bit of red wine vinegar. I added a lot of my Italian herb grinder. I love that thing. It tastes phenomenal in anything remotely Italian. I also added a little bit of chipotle, like, you know, dried ground chipotle seasoning, and a little bit of smoked paprika because I wanted that smoky hint in the back, and I also wanted a little bit of spice because that really does help, up, help to wake up your taste buds, which my brother has a really big problem with that. My brother puts hot sauce on pretty much everything. I don't know what caused him to have this issue, but I was explaining to him why he does that. It's not that he loves spicy food. He likes spicy food, but that's not why he does it. The way I was able to figure this out is because he literally said, I don't know, stuff tastes bland without it. And it's not the food that tastes bland, it's the receptors on your tongue. If you get accustomed to things with like a huge amount of flavor, or if you, and this also happens with people when they start to age, the taste receptors on your tongue age as well, or they can just get accustomed to a certain level. And if that level becomes too high or the decay becomes too high, you need something to wake up your taste receptors so that food will have flavor again. And the most common way to do that is hot sauce. And the reason that I know that that's the case is because a study was kind of shown where hot sauce really became popular when the baby boomers, which are people that are currently around like probably their mid 50s, hot sauce became popular around like 10 years ago when they started to age and reach that point where their taste receptors were, you know, starting to lose their power, so to speak. And hot sauce became popular because it was a way to wake them up so that they could taste things as strongly as they used to. This is not really an opinion. This is pretty much a fact, just so you all know. The problem is I can't just dump a bunch of hot sauce into something because it will cause a volcanic eruption in my esophagus. And I will feel like I swallowed hot coals. So not all of us are so fortunate to be able to do that. Which is why I'm taking the approach that I am taking today. Between the smokiness of the chipotle and the paprika, the acid of the vinegar, and the earthiness of the peppers, I should be able to amass the flavor profile that I'm looking for that is similar to a tomato sauce. Obviously, it won't be the same. I discussed this last week. Not everything's going to be the same. But I should be able to mimic it pretty closely. So let's get started. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. Let's go. All right, folks, we are going to build the Al Fuego sauce. And basically the way that we're going to do that is we're going to layer a couple flavors into it first before we add the red pepper mixture. Now, once again, in case you missed it, the red pepper mixture is four bottles or cans, whatever you have, four 12 ounce bottles of roasted red peppers. I drained them. I basically beat the crap out of them with my immersion blender or my stick blender. The reason I did that is because my actual blender was in the dishwasher. 
Otherwise, I would have just used that because it would have been a lot easier. I added a lot of Italian herbs. I used the same Italian herb grinder from the last episode. This one. Italian blend grinder. Which, like I said last time, is basil, oregano, and rosemary. I add a lot of that. I added a little bit of chipotle. Not the chipotle peppers. Chipotle seasoning. And a little bit of smoked paprika because I like smokiness in my sauce. As I said in the beginning of this episode, the reason we're using red peppers as opposed to tomatoes is because I can't have tomatoes. They have way too much acid. Now to build the sauce and to make sure that it tastes good, I also add a little bit of red wine vinegar to the peppers because that little bit of acid, it's not nearly as acidic as tomatoes, but that little extra bit helps all the flavors to blend together and to cut through some of that sweetness and the kind of oiliness that the peppers have to them after being soaked in those jars. But we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the pan. We're gonna put the pan over medium heat first. I gotta do that. And we're gonna saute some garlic and some onions. I have one small to medium red onion and half a cup of garlic. We're gonna saute all that up until it's nice and soft, add the red peppers, reduce all the moisture down and then we're going to toss the fettuccine in there, and that's basically going to be our final product. Um, you can add Parmesan cheese if you want to. I personally won't. I'm not really in the mood for that right now. But our water is boiling, so I'm going to go get started on the pasta, and then we will get started on the sauce. Alright folks, the pasta is in the sauce. The pan is starting to get a little bit warm. It's not hot yet. But it's warm enough that I feel comfortable adding the oil. You don't need much. You don't even need enough to cover the bottom of the pan. You just need a little bit. I dropped the cap. I'll do better next time, I promise. We're going to screw the cap back on. There we go. And once you see the oil start to shimmer, we're going to add the garlic. Start sauteing that. Add a little salt, a little bit of pepper. Throw the onions in there as well, and get everything moving, make sure nothing is stick. But we should be good to go in just a couple of seconds. I'm gonna stir the pasta over here, just to make sure that nothing really sticks. And yeah, that's about it. It's a lot of a waiting game. And the oil is starting to shimmer, so in goes the garlic. I'm gonna move that around a bit. I'm gonna add the onions as well. Get in there. Sink all that stuff up. We no longer need it. Stir this up. The reason I went with red onions is because they have a little more bite to them. And honestly, this is the best way that I can imitate a pasta sauce with my medical condition. If you can have tomatoes, use tomato sauce. But I really wanted to showcase to you guys that you can still... S I'm not going to say mimic because it's not the same. But you can have a lot of the flavors that you're used to without all of the health problems associated with it if you use a little bit of creativity. So I'm going to add some salt, as I said. Some fresh black pepper as well. I love salt and fresh black pepper, especially when they are together. We're going to mix this up and let it start to sweat or saute, or braise, or whatever you want to call it. Basically, we're going to let it soften. That's the whole point of what we're doing here. The pasta is boiling away. And like I said, as soon as the garlic and onions start to soften up significantly, we're going to add the blended red pepper mixture, and then we're going to reduce that as well. 
All right, folks, as you can see, the garlic and onion mixture has shrunken and softened significantly, considerably, fantastically. So it is time to add our red pepper mixture. And coincidentally, and by coincidentally, I mean not at all a coincidence, the pasta is just about done as well. So this is going to be kind of rapid fire here. What we're going to do is we're going to add the red pepper mixture. We're going to strain the pasta in a colander. Do not rinse it. Please do not rinse it. I will explain that in a, a little bit, but just don't rinse your pasta. Then we're going to combine everything into this pan, not the pot. We don't need the pot. Leave that somewhere where it's not going to hurt anyone. And go from there. So, add red pepper mixture and stir. Turn the heat off on the pasta. Turn the timer off as well if you had a timer. And now we're going to strain the pasta and add it back to the red pepper mixture. Now folks, you're about to see why this is my favorite colander. It has a trap door. So that has been added back. We're going to switch from spoon to tongs and start stirring all of this together. The reason we're adding this directly to the sauce is because we're actually letting the pasta finish cooking in the sauce. The pasta wasn't technically done. It was al dente, which is, you know, basically done, but not quite. Whereas now we're going to let it finish cooking in the sauce. It'll absorb some of that flavor. If you have any pieces that are like really sticking together, try and unstick them. I'm actually going to go twin tooled with this just because I want everything to be mixed together thoroughly in order to produce a better product. This is a great weeknight meal because it's fast. And it's easy too. Um, it's a lot of smashing, quite literally. It's a lot. There's a lot of violence involved in this dish. But basically, we're just gonna leave this here for a couple minutes. And while I do that, I'm gonna explain to you guys why you don't drain your pasta. So why are we not draining our pasta? Sorry, why are we not rinsing it? Ugh. Cut. So. Why are we not rinsing our pasta? When I was growing up, my parents would always rinse our pasta. I don't know why. The reason being is that it would cool down the pasta so that it would stop cooking. Because when you take pasta out of boiling water, guess what? The pasta is still really freaking hot. And it's still cooking even though it's not in the water anymore. So you'd think, rinse it with cold water, It'll lower the temperature, it'll stop cooking. And yeah, that works. The problem is, when you rinse pasta, you're rinsing a microscopic layer of starch off of the pasta as well. Basically what this means, if you remove the starch off the layer of pasta, if you move, sorry, if you remove the layer of starch off of the pasta, then sauce isn't able to really bind to it. It'll kind of just slide off. And if you're trying to really combine the two, you can't do that. If you're planning on refrigerating your pasta and not having any of it right now, sure. Rinse your pasta, that way it won't turn into one giant pasta brick when you refrigerate it. However, if you're planning on eating it now, which most people are doing if they're making pasta, don't rinse it. You need that starch so that the sauce will stick to the pasta, so that you don't end up with a pool of sauce on your plate and bland noodles in your mouth. Word to the wise. Now folks, just before you finish, you want to add a little more of the Italian herb grinder. Just enough to cover it slightly. 
That's like my favorite new thing right now. You want to mix all of it together. And you also want to taste test. You may need to add some stuff. This is not a perfect science. It's cooking. There's no such thing as a perfect science when it comes to cooking. But let's try it. See how it came out. It's good. What does it need? It needs cheese. It definitely needs cheese. But I'm not gonna add that to it while it's hot in the pan. I'm gonna let people add that to it if they want it. I personally think it needs cheese. Other people may disagree. Try it out yourself. Let me know what you think. But we're gonna plate this up and yeah, that's gonna be it. A nice short episode this week. Um, got a lot of f friends and family coming over for dinner soon, so I've been doing a lot of prepping for that as well. But it's a lot of family recipes, so I can't share that with you. But with that, let's get into the plating. Well, folks, that is going to be it for this week of Conscious Cooking. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. It is very much greatly appreciated. Stay tuned next week. I already know what I'm doing. I'm really excited about it. I'm not going to let you guys know. Just be aware, I had to order some stuff offline for next week's episode, so make sure you are excited for that. But like I said, that's going to be it for this week. I'm going to add some Parmesan to this myself. I have to go out and get some, if I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys, because I don't have any in the house at the moment. But that is going to be it. Thank you all once again for all of your support, and I will see you all next week. Goodbye.